Today, we have many black filmmakers who have impacted the filmmaking industry, like Jordan Peele, Ryan Coogler, Barry Jenkins, Ava DuVernay, John Singleton, Spike Lee, and many others who have been gracious enough to put their projects on screen. But what we don't think about is how far we have come given those opportunities for not only those filmmakers existing, but for future filmmakers to get those opportunities as well. We don't usually think about the first black filmmaker who broke the glass ceiling for us to be in the position to become a filmmaker. A black man from Chicago named Oscar Ruscha was the first black filmmaker in the history of Hollywood. Before that, Oscar had many jobs since he was 17, shining shoes, meat packing, and making steel. However, the next job Oscar had working as a porter for the American railway system led to saving money and getting many connections with wealthy people that would help him be a filmmaker. Oscar moves to South Dakota to become a homesteader, which is someone who lives and grow crop. It was a popular business in the 19th century, which was predominantly a white population. Discrimination kept many blacks from pursuing being a homesteader. So that's when Oscar decided to become a writer, talking about his experience becoming a black homesteader. This led to Oscar to write novels, to then pursue filmmaking with the help of the money he made from the homesteading and the connections he made becoming a porter. These experiences led him to make films about the realistic portrayal of black life, encountering the negative stereotypes of blacks at that time in the early 1900s. So you would think that the impact Oscar Mouche made by being the first black filmmaker and making his movies further progress the black community would lead to future generational filmmakers doing the same, right? I would say yes and no. As time moves on from Oscar Mouche, we see all these other black filmmakers I mentioned before, including making movies that have similar themes to Oscar themes of racism, injustice, poverty, interracial relationships, black masculinity, and femininity are what most black filmmakers put in their films. In Boys in the Hood by John Singleton, black masculinity and poverty are a huge theme of the movie following Trey Styles, who Cuba Glenn Jr. plays following his experience in Crenshaw, Los Angeles. Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing follows the themes of racism, and injustice in Brooklyn, New York, witnessing racial tension between the black people, Italian people, and the police. Spike Lee's other project, Jungle Fever, speaks on interracial relationships and the differences in their cultural mixing. While we have all these films that have further progress, black filmmaking, there are just other black movies that keep on empowering these black stereotypes, using trauma and the black man to further the main character's plot to further progress the story. This brings me to American Fiction, which is about a black novelist named Monk, who's played by Jeffrey Wright. Monk writes novels about Greek mythology, but they sell poorly, and the publishers want Monk to write a novel that's quote-unquote black enough. Publishers want Monk to write something like his peer Sinatra Golden, who's played by Issa Rae, called Wee's Liz in Dagato which is about drugs, baby mom issues, and most importantly, quote unquote, in the hood. It took that situation to piss Monk off to make the most stereotypical to be and blackest movie book he can make called My Pathology, and the publishers love it. The genius of American fiction is that the movie shows the audience two examples of what most producers or higher ups in Hollywood think people want and what the people actually want. The movies that the producers think people want are movies and shows that constantly deal with pain. Like your 12 Years of Slaves, the show Them from Amazon, The Wire, and The Green Book. Those films are well made, don't get me wrong. And every once in a while, we do need to be reminded that we are constantly discriminated against. But at the same time, is that the interesting part about the black community? The pain, trauma, and stereotypes are what producers think will get everybody in seats like my pathologies of the world. Then we have the other side of the story that it would be nice to have, which is Monk coming home to Boston to meet his family, dealing with issues that are not the end-all be-all, falling in love, and just normal things most black people go through. American Fiction 
constantly throughout the movie shows those two subplots with my pathology and Monk's plot with his family. I speak for myself as a black person that when I watch the differences between those two subplots, I'm like, finally, watching normal stuff happening with someone with my complexion, I'll need to be constantly reminded with every movie I watch involving black people that my race is screwed. It's okay to show a black man taking care of his mom as a plot point. I'm just saying, this is not a spoiler, but what hit me the most is a scene with Monk thinking if he should write my pathology or not. While Monk is on his laptop typing, there is a TV screen in front of him, and what's on is 50 Cent's infamous movie, Get Rich or Die Trying. That's when the thought of ninja movies kicked in. It was a, oh my god, not that Monk is putting on for his book, but what we watch, Get Rich or Die Trying, they have a lesson on how to make coke. Then seeing the scene got me thinking about other movies I watched as a kid. Precious was running with a bucket of chicken. Black dad and mom abusing each other to the extreme in Tyler Perry movies. And so plain. At this time, that's the image of the black community of these things I mentioned on screen. Cord Jefferson, who's the director of American Fiction, said this story of Monk wanting to write something instead of the typical black book is what motivated him to direct this movie. In an interview, Jefferson mentioned he was a journalist before he got involved in filmmaking and that at the end of his journalism career, the publishers wanted him to write articles involving black topics like Trayvon Martin news specifically. Jefferson thought it would be different to become a filmmaker not having to do black topics and that's why he constantly being recommended to do movies about slavery and black struggles by executives on what movies he should make. Similar to how Monk didn't want to write the typical black novel like My Pathology. American Fiction asked the question of when can black people be more than trauma, a sidekick, or pain? When can black people not be a satire to every story and just doing not just everyday stuff, but other stories that deal with the fantastical, romance, and go into further complex situations with black people that nobody talks about? When can black people go into a movie and watch something unique without being like, black people don't do that? That when nine times out of 10, you do. But the most important question is when, exec when can executives who are non-black see that we're more than that and let black people make a movie with just them in it. Oscar put out the template for being the first black filmmaker. All these black filmmakers add to the themes of what Oscar has been putting in his movies. Now can we make movies that are outside trauma, racism, injustice, and poverty? I just want to see a black Harry Potter type story, bro. That's it.